Hi, we are Roy and Karen, and today we are going to explain how we ended up buying a home in Hammock at Fenny. We started looking up north, but we ended up buying down south. You know, the three most important things in real estate, location, location, location. So we have to go back in time a little bit. Uh, for, for the longest time, Karen and I had an RV and we would travel around the country and everywhere that we would find some beautiful place, we would say to each other, you think we could retire here? Back in those days, my vision was a house in a quiet neighborhood with a wraparound porch and a couple of rocking chairs. And then one day I heard about active adult lifestyles, active adult communities. And that just changed my perspective. And I mm -hmm. showed some of these places to Karen. Uh, the first ones that came up were in Arizona. And they were nice and they, 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 they changed our paradigms, but they weren't perfect. Mm -mm. So I kept looking and looking and trying to find something that was a little nicer, a little better, a little less Phoenix, Arizona hot. <laughs> and as I looked, the villages kept popping up and I would just scroll right past it and go, I'm not going to Florida. But one day, a video popped up on YouTube and it was a 30 minute infomercial on the villages. And I was having my morning coffee and I just sat there and watched it for 30 minutes. And I said, OMG, we need to move there. So I got the link and I sent it to Karen. Mm -hmm. And I thought he'd lost his mind. Here we are living in central Texas and Roy complaining about the humidity day in and day out. And he's talking about moving to Florida. Well, we just kept watching more and more videos about the area. Uh, we watched videos by Jerry and Linda and uh, Gold Wingnut, and uh, we were just be becoming more fascinated. So I think it was right about May of 2021 where we decided the only way we were gonna know for sure if the villages was for us was to book a lifestyle preview visit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we did it for August because that's the hottest time of the year. That's the most hot, that's the most humid. We would know if we could handle it weather-wise. The other thing I need to mention is, at that point in time, I was convinced, totally convinced, that we were gonna move to the northern sections of the villages. First of all, it looked like the costs were lower, but mainly it's because it looked so mature and finished. There are some beautiful areas up north, just gorgeous. But also I kept seeing these pictures of Lake Sumter Landing. I was in love. This, here, Cape Cod in Florida, it was just gorgeous. So looking up north, it was going to be an older home it was going to be a more affordable home it was looking like the homes that we could afford though they were not updated so they were we were trying to place ourselves between the squares we wanted to be an equal distance to spanish springs and lake sumter mm -hmm. brown would be would be somewhat of a journey for us from up there but we were trying to cover all our bases and and be able to get as much as we could but the compromise was definitely coming in the age of the home. Yeah. So August 2021 comes 
and my vision of the villages is is, is, is turned 180 degrees. Uh, now I just want to be between the sixes, between the 466 and 466A. Now that we've been to the villages and experienced these things firsthand, we just knew we wanted to be here. I loved it. I loved what we were experiencing. I was becoming more willing to compromise in order to have this lifestyle. But we had a budget. Once we were here, we were learning that we might have to revisit that budget based on what we've learned. We're here in the villages doing our preview and we're driving around from the north to the south. We're looking over every neighborhood. We actually went into some neighborhoods that I was really interested in initially before I got here. But once we got here and I started looking at them, hmm, I wasn't thrilled. We knew we could still do it. If that's how we needed to work it out because of our budget, okay. Uh, but I had other areas that I would prefer to live in, again, between the sexes. Karen was getting interested in the down south areas uh, because they were new and they didn't need the updates. They, were, they didn't need new roofs. But I was concerned that in those new areas, they looked unfinished. They were barren and uh, all the stores were up north and we were going to be isolated down south. Also, down south, they tended to have power lines and they were built along the turnpike. I thought all these things were issues at that time. Roy and I were not on the same page. I saw the potential of the south. I loved all the new construction and the activity and the excitement of that. And when Bobby showed us some new homes in St. Catherine, we saw the Durham model for mm -hmm. the first time. I was ready to sign on the dotted line right then. <laughs> I knew Sawgrass was coming. I knew Middleton and Eastport were coming. I didn't feel that Brownwood was that far away. And when the villages is spread out over 17 plus miles, we were going to need to use the car to get to places. September of 2021. We're not ready to buy yet, but we're getting really close. The problem is that the prices in the villages were continuing to escalate. And I was getting really worried we were getting it, we were going to get priced out. So I started to compromise with myself. And I said, oh, we don't need to have a backyard for the dogs. If that's what it takes to afford a home in the villages because we really wanted to move here. But having those kind of thoughts was, it was breaking my heart. I was just not feeling good. So here we are facing compromises in order to get to the villages and I'm looking at, okay, maybe I can live up north in an older home and help offset some of the price increases that we're facing. But I know what the costs of repairs and updates can be and how difficult it is to find the contractors here to come in and do these sorts of things for you. And I understand now why the average villager moves <laughs> three plus times. Maybe that's going to be us. We're going to buy a home and get here and then we're going to move. <laughs> oh joy. <laughs> so as I watched the price of pre-owned homes between the sexes, moving way past our budget. Uh, I just started warming up to being down south. Uh, the village is a very strange place in that new homes are generally less than a comparable pre-owned home. So we could get a brand new two bedroom, two bath courtyard villa in a brand new neighborhood with a new roof and new appliances and with the kind of floor plan you expect in a home built in 2022. So we're not ready to buy the home that we see in St. Catherine with our village's sales agent, Bobby Hannon. And the village that's coming up next is Citrus Grove. And we're looking at this village while mm -hmm. we're there going, 
Mm, not for us. <laughs> Too close to the turnpike. There's power lines going through. Some people doesn't impact them, but for us, not so interested in buying there. And the other thing was, uh, if it's not going to be Citrus Grove, where's it going to be? We really didn't know at that moment what the next village they were going to build was or where it was going to be. So we were very up in the air. So here we are. We're getting more excited because we're seeing that our home in Texas is going up in value. We've talked to the realtors. We've decided which realtor we're going to use. We've discussed what pricing we can expect in this market right now. And now we can see that with the adjustments that we've needed to make to our budget, we can do this and we can buy new and we can look at this Durham mm -hmm. and now we just have to figure out where. So this is October of 2021 and we still don't have all of our ducks in a row, but we're this close. What we're still waiting on is my employer. It's also at this point that we are pretty convinced that it's Case and Hammock that we're going to move to, but it's right along the turnpike. So I contact Dave and Brenda from the YouTube channel, Exploring the Villages, and I asked them if they could do a drive by in our potential new neighborhood and check out the sound. So graciously, they went out there and did it and actually did a YouTube video on it. The turnpike sound is so subjective. So now we're November of 2021 and two Dorums come up in Hammock at Fenny. The price was right, but we still don't have our ducks in a row. So we passed, but it got us thinking about Hammock at Fenny as our village, as opposed to Case and Hammock. Mm -hmm. But I felt like it was out in the boonies, whereas Case and Hammock felt like it was right in the midst of things. But we're so close to having our ducks in a row that it's time to go get the pre-qualification letter we're going to need for our financing. Now we're comparing Case and Hammock with the potential noise and the potential noise from the sawgrass with the music or Hammock at Finney, which we think might be too far removed. Here we are still deliberating. We haven't figured it out. It's December and I get the letter. All of our ducks are in a row now. I've got the job approval. Our house in Texas is done. It's finished. It's painted. Uh, it's cleaned. Uh, it is ready to go. And we get a phone call from Bobby. A Dora model has, is going to come up tomorrow morning in Hammock at Fenny. And I don't know. I don't know do I want to be out in what I consider the boonies. But I've made my decision. I want to be in Hammock at Fenny. It's gorgeous. It's not that far out. And I love the nature and the peaceful area. So the other part was we really didn't know when Case and Hammock would be available. We didn't know if sound would be a problem there. And we didn't know what the pricing was going to be for those Durhams because they were using tilt wall construction. And other areas they'd done that, the prices were substantially higher. Okay, they were water sites and they were preserve sites, but we knew it was going to have an impact. The question was really how far out was Hammock at Fenny from Brownwood and from Sawgrass Grove, which is the present. But then the future was going to bring Middleton and Eastport and how close would we be to those locations? I decided the future was really bright for Hammock at Fenny. And we decided to go for that house. So honey, 
How do you feel about our decision now? No doubt in my mind it was the right decision. I pull into the village of Fenny entrance to turn off to hammock at Fenny and it's gorgeous. I love the trees and the Spanish moss. I love all the water features and the golf course in the background. I love the preserve. I love walking out there with the dogs in the morning. It's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. You know, one of the things that's so interesting is I wanted to be up north because it felt mature. But the way that the villagers built this brand new area is they left all these beautiful giant oak trees with Spanish moss. They built our village around all this mature greenery. It, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, we, we picked this area because we thought we wouldn't have to deal with turnpike noise. And we don't. What do we deal with instead? Instead, we've got some noise from 301. When, but only in the morning, right? When everybody's going to work. Mm -hmm. We have some noise from the trains. Mm -hmm. But my honey loves the trains. Mm -hmm. uh, I think once or twice we've heard, off in the far distance, some sound probably coming from the cement and the quarry. It's... Uh, very, very distant, not at all a big deal for us. And like you said, one, only once or twice mm -hmm. that I can recall. And we've been here for three months now. Mm -hmm. So Eastport, Eastport looks that. to be such a fantastic, mm -hmm. not a town square, a new lifestyle something or other they're calling it. It looks to be an awesome place mm -hmm. and we're going to be so close to it. Mm -hmm. I love that. But not too close. We had concerns about sawgrass being noisy and too close, and yeah. and Eastport's just far enough away. Well, that's, it's still going to be about 20 minutes away. We're never going to hear it. Sawgrass was less than a half a mile from Case and the Hammock, quarter mile, and we might have heard that. I thought being in Case and at, in Hammock at Fenny was going to be putting us out in the boonies and it was going to put us so far from shopping. And I am so glad that we are here. I am so glad that I just need to get in the golf cart and go do my shopping up north and, and let them deal with the, the, the street noise of 466A. We can come home and have it nice and quiet here. I like it. Uh, one of the things that uh, you have to take into consideration is this is a big community. Now, this is huge. It's over 20 miles from one end to the other. The villages right now. Yeah. And there's going to be trade-offs no matter what. You're either going to live next to a turnpike or you're going to live, live next to a, a county road or, or a golf cart path. Even if you have a golf cart view, uh, um, a golf course view, you're still going to have the golf carts going by. You know, we and talked to someone during our lifestyle visit who said, that, you know, even when you're thinking that you're nowhere near Buena Vista or Morris or the Turnpike, then comes the Dawn Patrol, <laughs> all the <laughs> golf carts heading out for their tea times, which brings its own noise. So I don't know if you're going to find any community of 130 to 150,000 people where it's going to just be silent like it is out in the country. Are there places like that here in the villages? Yes, but it doesn't mean they're going to stay that way. We got some questions from some viewers that we'd like to address. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura GB. I'd like to hear you discuss the choice to buy new versus pre-owned and the pros and cons of being in a new area still under construction. So what I'd like to say is I don't see any pros of being in a construction zone. <laughs> having the trucks going by and hearing jackhammering and having the streets all filthy, I just don't find any pros in that whatsoever. But the excitement of all the new builds and these new areas, I love it. Maybe it's just because I work in this industry, but I love seeing all that new growth. It's very, very exciting. Now, what about new versus old home? 
I wanted a new home. If you look at price and price alone, a pre-owned home could appear to be lesser expensive than a new home. But then when you start thinking about updating the appliances mm -hmm. and getting rid of the carpet and maybe needing a new roof, all of and waiting and waiting and waiting for someone to come to do this for you with the cost of materials and labor increasing rapidly. So that bargain home might actually end up costing you more than the new home. But here's the other thing. The way they built homes back in 95, 2000, 2005, all the rooms were subdivided. The new homes, you get this new open, airy feeling. Our new home is the bomb. We love it. The open kitchen right into the dining room and the living room. It all just flows right through. Thanks for the question, Laura. Sarah J wants to know, was your priority a certain village or a certain floor plan lot location within the village? We were kind of all over the place, but our main priority was budget. Mm-hmm. And it all shifted and changed and shifted and changed. And, and we still stuck to budget, although yeah. we had to adjust the budget. Yeah, we started with budget. We ended with budget. And everything in the middle just kept changing and morphing as time went by. Before we got here, we concentrated on this. Once we got here, we concentrated on that. Once we went back home and looked at what we could sell our home for, and then we started concentrating on that. So it, it, it kept changing over time. As I mentioned, I thought we were going to have to compromise. I thought we might have to give up that backyard, but we didn't because that was our number two priority. We wanted a house within budget and we wanted a backyard for our sons, our furry boys. So Carla Testa. Did you find downsizing to a two bedroom difficult, especially with the limited storage as it is in the villages? I just don't know if I can downsize that much. Carla, it took us months <laughs> <laughs> to sort through everything and decide what are we keeping? What are we getting rid of? What needs to go to our children? What can we just not let go of? and then go back and revisit it all again. And we went through that multiple times and sold a lot of stuff. And a lot of stuff. Decided that the, the decor that we had for our Texas home with the, the <laughs> craftsman style, everything brown. brown and red and gold <laughs> was not gonna suit what we wanted to do here with our new home. So basically we got rid of all the furniture and it made it a lot easier. But you know what, Carla? It's a relief. Downsizing is a relief. Getting rid of all that old stuff instead of lugging it around anymore. Best thing we've ever done. We're not youngsters. We don't need all this stuff anymore. Laura Lampy, I hope I pronounced your name right, Laura. What were your must-haves in your new home? What were the nice-to-haves but not mandatory? And what were the deal-breakers? Well, I think the deal-breaker is an easy one. Noise. No noise. That was no power lines. That was that was it. Uh, we didn't really consider those things initially. Going back to May before we were ever here, and we were thinking about being up north. Those things didn't play into our consciousness at all. And there's power lines up there, mm -hmm. but the big mature trees cover them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. We've talked about what the must-haves were. We. It was the backyard and it was the being within budget. Everything else was the nice to have. But once Karen saw <laughs> the Durham plan. And the walk-in shower. Mm. That became almost, almost a must have. And the pantry was the oh, other one. Yeah. It became the same kind of thing. Once we compared that, to the ones that didn't have the mm -hmm. walk-in pantry like our model has. Susan Goodman says, I keep hearing about the turnpike noise. Do you hear turnpike noise from your area? Our lifestyle visit is this August. Well, I'm so glad that she's coming here in yes. August 
so she can find out if in August it is miserable. I don't know <laughs> where you're coming from, Susan. Maybe it's miserable where you are too. <laughs> I imagine if you're moving up from the Keys, this is not going to feel so humid. And maybe you're moving from New York City or New Jersey or Philly and you're used to that big city noise and the turnpike is just a nothing to you. Mm -hmm. It's very subjective, very, very subjective how people feel about that. I don't know if it comes off, but I'm originally from New York City. And when I was growing up, there was, and I didn't realize it at the time, there was a constant buzz everywhere you went. And when I moved from New York to Los Angeles in the late 70s, and I moved into an area where it was quiet, quieter. I couldn't go to sleep. It was too quiet. I could hear the tick tock of the clock. I didn't even know they did that. <laughs> so again, it is subjective, like Karen said. The turnpike noise from a half a mile away might drive you nuts or you might not even notice it. A mile away, I would say you're getting closer to not being a problem. It depends on the topography. Is the sound mm -hmm. traveling up? The sound doesn't usually travel down. It goes up and over. So. Topography could become an issue. Are there trees in between? Is mm -hmm. there water to have it echo off of? I mean, it's, there's a lot of different variables. Well, we're not by the turnpike. I think the turnpike is like three miles away from us. Pretty close. Don't hear a thing when it no. comes to that. But we are by the 301. And so when it's quiet, not so much at night when it's quiet because there's not a lot of cars on the 301 at night. But in the morning, as the, the morning commute starts, we do, when we're, when we're taking our boys out for a walk, we do hear some traffic noise mm -hmm. on the 301. Mm -hmm. But it's only for that short period of time because in our backyard, I don't really hear it. And inside the house, I, it's, don't hear a thing. it's silent. That's it. So we appreciate your questions and we appreciate you stopping by. And uh, please subscribe, click the bell. It doesn't cost you anything, mm -hmm. but you will get notified the next time we put a video out. See you next time. You'll want to watch this video next. Or you'll want to watch this video next.